Hello brothers and sisters, God bless, hope your night or day is going good, everything's going well with you. This will be another video demonstrating that John MacArthur has a false gospel. So we'll just go ahead and play the short clip and we'll take the salvation test with John MacArthur. So we'll play the video and we'll find out if you're a true believer according to John MacArthur. You get this question asked you as much as I do. People very frequently ask me, how do I know I'm saved? This is the answer. Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, as much capacity as you have? So you can see the very simple salvation test from John MacArthur to see if you're really saved and have eternal life is, are you keeping the law? Are you loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength? Remember that Jesus in Matthew chapter 22 said that the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and the second is like it, to love your neighbor as you love yourself, and all the law and the prophets hang on those two commandments. So by implication, what John MacArthur is saying, the way that you can know that you have eternal life is you're compliant to the entirety of the law and you're obedient to it. Since the entirety of the law, hang on, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. By implication, what John MacArthur is saying, to know that you have eternal life, you have to be obedient to the entirety of the law. Notice how he's not saying you can know that you have eternal life by believing on the Son, as the Scripture says. These things are right to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. By believing on the Son of God, you can know, not think or hope or wish it's a possibility or find out when you get there, but you can know that you have eternal life. John MacArthur is not getting people to look to Jesus to believe they have eternal life, but their obedience to the law. I don't know if you get this question asked you as much as I do. People very frequently ask me, how do I know I'm saved? This is the answer. Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, as much capacity as you have? So John MacArthur is asked this question quite frequently, how do I know that I have eternal life? And he points them to their obedience to the law. In other words, people are asking him, how do I know that I'm not guilty before God and that's my status? And on the basis of that, I can have eternal life. And he's telling them the works of the law. The scripture says we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. That a person has a non-guilty verdict independent from any performance to the law. Independent from loving God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. No. No. If you don't have works, you're going to hell. Yeah, but Paul, we already dealt with you and demonstrated that you have a false gospel as well. That you teach people to look to the law to ultimately see if they have a not guilty status as well. But by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in this sight, for only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. No. No. If you don't have works, you're going to hell. So it's very clear when it comes to John MacArthur and Paul Washer, they get people to look to the works of the law to see if they're ultimately saved, to see if they're justified, which is a false gospel. If you get this question asked you as much as I do, people very frequently ask me, how do I know I'm saved? This is the answer. Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, as much capacity as you have? See, there's nothing about recognizing that you're a sinner before God and that your best attempts to try to be good end in catastrophic failure. So you need a perfect Savior, which is Jesus Christ. So you put your faith in him by which you can know you're saved and you have eternal life. Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 47, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me has 
everlasting life, not might have, not could have, not possibly have, but has everlasting life. That's why you can know that you have everlasting life, because when you believe you have everlasting life, it's not that you could have it or possibly have it or you might have it. The scripture says these things are right to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. The only qualifier for knowing that you have eternal life is believing in the Son of God. The Apostle John didn't say these things are right to you who love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, that you may know that you have eternal life. You can never know that you have eternal life based on the law because only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. By the works of the law no flesh will be justified in his sight, for only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. You can never have the knowledge that you have eternal life through the law, only guilt. Only the self-righteous believe that through the law they could have the knowledge that they have eternal life through their obedience. But believers know that they have eternal life through the knowledge of the not guilty verdict that we have by faith independent from the law. We maintain that a man is justified by faith independent from the works of the law. In my opinion, John MacArthur has to have a callous heart towards God, not to point to people to believe on the Son for eternal life, but to point to the law, and then in doing so, having to bring down the stringency of it. Because to have a not guilty status under it, or to be righteous in God's sight, you have to keep the law perfectly and completely without fail 100% of the time. All who rely on the works of the law are under a curse, for cursed is everyone who doesn't continue to do all things in the book of the law to perform them. So John MacArthur is putting people under the curse of the law by which they will never be able to perform all things under the law to ever see that they have a right standing before God because only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. He's teaching people how to have a very shallow temporal peace based on human performance. It's ultimately a delusional peace based on the idea that they're loving God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, and so therefore they can know that they have peace with God through their efforts. The scripture says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So having been justified by faith, which is a non-guilty verdict, through the knowledge of that, we have peace toward God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Completely independent from our efforts, we maintain a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. So this peace that we have towards God is through the not guilty verdict that we have by faith in him, which is ultimately a result of his blood that has accomplished this peace, having reconciled all things to himself, whether things on heaven or things on earth, having made peace through the blood of the cross. So it's through the blood of the cross that Jesus made peace. It's not through our human efforts that we look to under the law by loving God with all our heart, mind, and soul. It's by faith in the blood that we have a not guilty verdict, and through the knowledge of that we have peace. And Jesus said about that peace, My peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Jesus lets us know that he doesn't give us a temporal peace, he gives us an eternal peace. Not as the world gives does he give to us, let not our hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. If you believe that your peace is dependent upon your works and your performance, your heart will be troubled and it will be afraid. If your peace isn't dependent on the blood, if your peace isn't blood dependent, you will have trouble, your heart will be afraid. Because your self-perceived good performance to the law goes up and down, up and down. And if your peace is dependent upon that, it will go up and down and up and down. It will only be a delusional peace because only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. It won't be an actual peace that is legitimate. The only legitimate peace that we can have is through the blood of Christ and what it has accomplished. Through the knowledge of that, we have a non-guilty verdict. And through the cross, Jesus washed away all our sins, past, present, and future. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. By one offering, he has perfected forever those who are sanctified. By one single offering... He has perfected us forever in the sight of God. And there's nothing we can add to that to make it any better. People like John MacArthur do teach people that there is something that you can do to the finished work of Christ to make it better. It will be due to your works and performance, and that will also be a demonstration that you're ultimately saved, your obedience and compliance to the law. A law that, according to Scripture, no one has the ability to actually keep. So God bless you, brothers and sisters. I hope your night or day is going good. Everything's going well with you.
Take care.